I don't, for people who watch us before, this is Kian. Kian wanted to be a robotic engineer. You can see here. He's very, he's very uh, technologically savvy and very, he was very interested into building stuff. Okay. And he, <laughs> um, look at, here's another video of him building something. So this, so this is Kian. He's like showing he, he, this device that he built and he's now testing it for a camera to see if it works. Right. He's saying, I made this for a competition. Oh, and he started the video by saying in the name of the God of the rainbow. Um, and now a lot of people uh, use that phrase to, you know, as a way to say F you to the government. Okay. But let me, let, let me tell you. So this is a device that he built. And so he's testing it and he sees that it works. Like you're saying to the camera, as you can see, it works. So, so, uh, so Kian was shot by the government and killed multiple times, right? Um, he was in his car with his parents, and the car was in the caught in the middle of the protest. And for some reason, the government um, armed forces thought that it has something to do with the protesters, and they started shooting at the gun. And his mom told him to go hide under the seat. And he said, the mom said, like, he was too chubby to fit under the seat, and that's why he got shot and died there. And the mom refused to, because, refused to give the body, take the body to the hospital because the government uh, officials, they kidnap the bodies of the protesters they kill, and they use it as a negotiating tool with the parents. They want the parents this is to say- a literal government of- child killers and literal body snatchers yes um so that's why the mom knowing this refute as soon as the boy died in the car she took the body right to, to home uh, instead of giving it to the armed forces and she put uh kian uh, she covered him with ice and there's a picture of him that I can show. The body is right in the middle of the river of Kian, but the bullets in his body, right in the middle of the living room, with ice around his body, uh, just to to preserve the body so that they could bury the body themselves, so the government can't use it as a, a tool for um, to get them to say because they're supposed to come and say our our kid was not in the middle of the protest; it was shot by I don't know. ISIS terrorists or so the protesters themselves or it's like, yeah, they come up with different stories um, or maybe died in an accident or something like they want to force the parents, but that's why the mother didn't do that. Right. So, oh, so this is the, that's why the people are, this is the picture they have of Kian, the rainbow, because he said um, in the name of the God of the rainbow and the ice around it because of the mother covering the uh, body with ice. Right. And you know the little you device that you saw door to, door to ask right. her neighbors for enough ice to preserve her child's body so the yeah. government wouldn't steal it. You can it's see more people are more people are using his device in the protest uh, to this this device a lot of people are making it now and has become a symbol of the opposition. You can see I showed you this last week as well this device Oh, and this video, I always So it's just showing like the device just flying into heaven. Um, so the reason, oh, here's another video of somebody using it in the protest in the, the protest and a lot of kids are now uh using this device oh also i didn't show you this Susanna. oh these are you saw this one these are kian's friend at his burial yeah right with black balloon but this is what i wanted to show you in system baluchistan kids are like holding paintings of rainbows with the hashtag in the name of the god of the rainbows right but um oh look at this people are people are hanging um posters in iran of kian saying 
Hukumet, Hukumet Kudakush means the, a child killing government, right? Oh, I th wait. Uh, yeah. Oh, never mind. I misunderstood the translation. Yeah. Um, wait, I want to show you the crowd. So this is the crowd that showed up to Kian's funeral, right? And people... So people are chanting at Kian's funeral, all these people showed up saying death to Khamenei, right? At Kian's funeral. But you can see the crowd. The crowd was huge. The crowd was massive. Right? I mean, it's as far as uh, the eye can see. They go into the horizon. It's crazy. Yeah. So, but there's a, the reason why I wanted to show you this today, which is relevant, maybe, oh, I, this is another one. Uh, but there, one thing I wanted to show you guys, which is, a bit controversial and, and uh, just to be clear i don't agree with the entirety of the sentiment here okay and there's this is a kind of a complicated uh, statement okay i just want you to see the reason why i give you all that context is because at the at kian's funeral the mom gave a testimony of everything that happened that led to kian's death but she also shared a, a whole bunch of other things about Kian himself, right? And I just wanted to highlight this part of it because, not because I agree with the entirety of it, because I agree, I like certain parts of it, but I don't like certain other parts of it. But I just want you to see the, the state at which a lot of Iranians are at this point, because a lot of people have this understanding that Iran is a Islamic country with Islamic people, right? And it's true a lot about a lot of people in Iran, okay? But there's a different side to this as well. So just keep that in mind while I, and this is at, again, at Kian's funeral, the mom is giving a speech to that, to that large crowd that you saw, and this is what Kian is saying, right? So it says the mother of Kian uh, at his funeral, right? So it's saying, I want, sh I want to ask you, please don't play the Quran for my child at all. Please don't play the Quran. <laughs> My child hated the Quran. Okay? But listen to what happens when the mom at this funeral to that mass crowd, a lot of them were wearing the hijab, by the way, right? You saw a lot of the women there were wearing hijab. But when the mom says, My, my child hated the Quran, listen to the reaction of the crowd. The crowd oh my god. The crowd goes wild. The crowd applauds the line by the mother saying, My my child hated the Quran. Let, one, more, one more time for everybody everybody. Look at the reaction. Okay. And I guys, the translation is accurate. I speak this language. This is Persian, okay? So, like, don't play the Quran for my child. So she's like, okay, so this was, I like this part. It takes a dark turn at the end, okay? So just excuse the dark turn at the end, okay? But so far, so good, right? So she says, because said my child was nine years old so again the regime killed a nine nine-year-old boy right it says because of the quran hold on so there was a verse that she's reciting in arabic that he was supposed to rem rem um, recite for school right so this, so she says that so, so the translation is not very good here. Okay, so she's reciting the Arabic part, and she says this verse in the Quran. She wasn't, he wasn't remembering it, like he was, like so. The mom is like practicing with the child, preparing him for schoolwork, and he's he's supposed to remember this verse, right? So he wasn't remembering him, so she hit him. So the mother hit him because she wasn't remembering it proper. He wasn't remembering it. <laughs> So it says, I hit him because of a verse of the Quran. So this translation is not good here. He said, she's saying because he wasn't remembering the verse, I hit him, that he had it. Oh, yes. Uh, it's actually, she says it after. That he had it memorized. He stared at me, cried, and said, 
mom, but I'm not an Arab. Okay? So the crowd cheers again. Um, so I don't like this. I, I kind of like the first part when people cheered him hating the Quran. I don't like the second part, okay? Because it comes, I mean, it's a bit racist. I mean, it is, it's not a bit, it's racist, right? So Kian uh, saying I'm not Arab is getting a cheer from the crowd, okay? Because Okay, but to be the, fair, as a child, I would think of it from the perspective of like, this isn't my language. I'm not, I, I don't speak Arabic. So it's difficult for me to memorize something in a different language. True. But it comes across as racist, okay? Because, especially yes. because the crowd, the crowd cheers. The I am again. I'm not criticizing Kian or the mother at all, okay? At all, okay? This is completely understandable, um, especially a nine-year-old boy, right? I mean, I had that thought when I was in Iran. I was like, when we had to learn the Quran, I was like, guys, we're like, we were frustrated with the fact that learning Arabic will never have anything help us in our career ever. Like this, we were learning Arabic because of religion. So we were always frustrated with the idea of why are we learning Arabic, okay? Oh, I know. But People complain about it all the time. Yes, yes. So, however, I the reason, again, no disrespect to Kian's mother at all, okay? But cheering that second part is problematic because Iranian Arabs are what are are part of this protest right I, iran is mostly not arab but iranian arabs are united with other iranians against this regime okay and they are one of some of the people who have been paying a heavy most. price for their opposition right so iranian other iranian people cheering not being arab is Again, I don't want to be nitpicky here because this is this is I just want to point out that if you are an Iranian Arab, I just want you to know that you are valued, you are part of you are a citizen of Iran as much as every other Iranian, okay? And no there's you you being an Arab should never be used as a way to make you feel like you're a second class citizen, okay? But yeah. I don't think I don't think this was meant to come across that way. I think like Susanna is right. I think like this is an understanding of like this is not my language, right? Why is this being forced upon me? Why do I have to learn this? So this is not an anti-Arab position, and I I hope it doesn't come across like that to any Arab Iranians who are watching this. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're yeah. just very sensitive about this because you've been fighting against anti like Arab racism, like way before you were even an atheist activist, like before you were an atheist activist, like you were doing work against Aryan supremacy, essentially, because you're like so familiar with how ethnic minorities in Iran, like are just, they're treated like they're mentally disabled <laughs> by a lot of farce people. So I think just coming, you're very sensitive about this kind of thing because you're so familiar with how bad these attitudes can get. And I think that's really appreciated by a lot of people because oftentimes like the reality of those racist attitudes might not be acknowledged that much by a lot of people. Right. Yeah. Well, let me actually finish the clip. I want to address something in the live chat as well, but yes, yeah. true. Oh, yeah. Like I like, no, see, actually I was right. I was right about the problematic nature of the statement because she, they, because she said, like, I am not Arab, I'm Iranian. That is problematic, okay? Because you can be Arab and Iranian at the same time. Again, Kian is nine years old. Nobody should be criticizing for what he's saying, okay? But I think the first part should have been the only part that should have been celebrated or said. Like, just saying I hate the Quran. You don't, I don't think the part that I'm Arab not Iranian, I'm, I'm Iranian, not Arab, should have been stated because that's not a contradiction. We have we have an Arab minority living in Iran, okay? And those Arab Iranians are Iranians. There's no contradiction between being Iranian and Arab, right? It's like saying, I mean, I'm, 
I'm Iranian, not Arab, makes as much sense as saying I am, I am Iranian, not Turkish. We have a lot of Iranian Turks. Or saying I'm, Kurd I'm Iranian, not Kurdish. We have a lot of Iranian Kurds. Or I'm I mean, Iranian. Like, I'm, I'm black Persian. but not American. Like these things yes. are not mutually exclusive. Yes. There's yes. So like, oh, yeah, exactly. That's a great example. So then I'm like, I'm not black, I'm American. One is an ethnicity, the other one is a nationality. You could have any ethnicity and be a citizen of Iran. So, yeah, there, yeah, I'm Iranian. Why do you make me recite the Quran? I think the only, the anti-Quran part was based, uh, based, but the Arab part is not based at all. <laughs> but the pe people are, so why are you making, people are cheering both though. But anyways, whether you have a problem with this or not, the, the the video is just for me to show you how many people like how much applause a line like this get again by a by a population of people that a lot of them are wearing headscarves so don't judge people with their headscarf people who are wearing headscarves are cheering somebody saying my child hated the Quran just let Holy let cow. that sink in <laughs> right but um, I do want to highlight something here. Um, Pakistani Defense Force is saying, Armin, the Arabs forced Persians into Islam. No, they didn't. There some people who happen to be Arabs did that. If you want to complain about that, then you should be complaining to me about Iran Iranians forced a lot of brutality upon Indians. Right? Do you want to hold me responsible? for all the crimes that the Iranians committed in India? Wait, if don't I, open if, that door because a lot of people will say yes. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> like, what? what is that? Like, Soha is here. Isn't Soha here? Soha is yeah. Arabic. Soha is an atheist Arab right here. Look at, look at, <laughs> look at, good thing I found this comment. Look at this. This is Soha, who's Arab. Look at her comments, right? I can't even read this, <laughs> all right? And you're like, when you say Arabs, like, look at this. Armin, the Arabs forced Persians into Islam. Do you want to condemn Soha here, who is, like, more aggressive than me against Islam <laughs> for what some Arabs? Again, even, even the Arabs in that at that time who, like, invaded Iran, even most Arabs at that time were not involved. Like, this is, you know, Pakistani, def uh, Pakistani Defense Force has such a... By the way, that's the name of the person, not the actual Pakistani Defense Force. Um, you're so tribal. Like, you want to hold an entirety of a group of people responsible for the crimes of a few people. Your tribalism is off the charts. Like, you are so dogmatically uh, collectivist in your mindset that I don't know if there's any cure for it. Um, yeah. There's that. But anyways, you highlighted a few other uh, points. Oh, did I? Let me pull them up. Oh, <laughs> um, this is just a nice comment from Numan saying, Armin and Susanna, you guys look cute today. Aww, thank you for the thank compliment. You. Oh my God. What? Thank you, Jigar. I just got coffee delivered to me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I got excited. Um, <laughs> This is quick, but I think this is something that we should uh, just talk about, clarify, because it came up. So Samuel Stinter is saying, I read the news that they sentenced 15,000 plus people to the death penalty. So let's just clarify quickly. What happened was that at the time, there were roughly 15,000 people that were detained. Right now, the number is closer to 17,000 people who have been arrested and detained. And a few weeks ago, the quote-unquote parliament of Iran, okay, the quote-unquote representative of the people, okay, not the case, um, basically, how many parliamentary members are there? Out of 270, yeah. out of 290, 90, yes. yeah, of 290 MPs basically issued a statement or voted for the harshest penalties available to those arrested for protesting. And many protesters have been charged with waging war against God or um, what's the other one? Spreading corruption in the land. And these sentences have carry the harshest punishment of the death penalty. So 
these now 17,000 people, not all of them have been indicted yet, although thousands have been indicted. Not all of them have been sentenced yet, although there already are a number of prisoners that have been sentenced to death. So these, you know, at the time, 15,000, have they been formally sentenced? No. Were there open calls by the vast majority of the parliamentary members to execute them? Yes. So that's where the confusion comes in. Did I explain that correctly, Armin? Yeah, they would, like, the regime would not dare now like they used to back in the 80s. But executing 15,000 people is would be the they know that would be the end of them right if they if the iranian regime comes out today and executes fifteen thousand people uh that would be like okay they're just committing political suicide and literal suicide actually after that like that would be the, the um that would be the end of that the, the regime will be done by within a week right so they would not dare I, I, i'm not saying the execution rates are not high the execution rates are high and it will be very high uh, in the coming uh, months, you know, so but it wouldn't be fifteen thousand, right? So this is just a, it's called grandstanding, right? Like taking um, these are very the, the current parliament in Iran, which is called the Majlis. It's a lot more conservative than the previous ones, like in like more transparently conservative. They're all conservative, right? But they are responding to a base of people who voted them in who are the more radical islamically radical part of the iranian government uh, iranian people and the, those parts of the iranian people are very upset about these protests and are demanding are asking why the government is not literally shooting them down and why are in the they street. being so in the streets like they they the iranian people who are pro regime they have a hashtag called payanam mashad which, which means basically stop treating the, these protesters with glove kits. Like they're asking for the regime to be harsher. They're like so shocked. Like why is the regime not killing more people? Like please end the end the protests, right? Uh, and these members of parliaments are trying to signal to the people who voted them in that we're pressuring the government to be harsher on the protesters, right? So they wanted to show that this parliament is with them because the parliament doesn't really care about much about the standing among all Iranians. It cares more about its standing among that minority of Iranians who are extremely hardline. So that's why they were maybe like taking such an aggressive. It's a it's a stance that they know that the regime would not take, but they're trying to signal to their base that we are trying to push them to be more aggressive. A lot of people would have a d problem with you talking like this, Armin, because they would say that you're downplaying how high the risk actually is, because there are people that are facing the death penalty for this. My, what I'm saying does not contradict that. There are, people are facing executions. Yes, the government is not going to execute fifteen thousand people. These I don't know. People are, would be yes, yeah, be like you're downplaying yeah, but it by the, saying that. No, but well, it's it, it's a, okay. These two do not contradict each other. The the fact that people are going are many people are going to be executed is alarming and should be shouted off the rooftops, right? The fact that it's not going to be, but they're actually what you're doing is downplaying it, right? Because you are going to be dismissed when you go tell the international community that fifteen thousand people are going to be executed, and when that not when and people are like, oh my god, that's a disaster, and if that and then four hundred people are executed or two hundred people are executed, people are like, oh okay, well it wasn't that bad because we were expecting fifteen thousand. Okay, it's not as bad as we thought. We could go home now. Right? You should I think like, people oh got confused because there was a call for yes. 15,000 people to be executed or sentenced to death versus how many actually have been sentenced. That's where the confusion was coming in. And um, yeah, I saw a lot of people like really having a lot of rage at how the media was going about fact checking that scenario because the they were basically downplaying it saying like oh this isn't true they're like as if there's so, nothing to be concerned about and there so are people here's how okay if you want to raise alarm about this this is how you do it okay even though the government is incapable of executing fifteen thousand people the parliament that is supposed to represent the iranian people has been calling for the execution, like as far as execution, punishing the prisoners, as far as executing 15,000 people. And, you know, so you could be like, look at 
how far away their parliament, which is supposed to be a representative of the, the, of the people, is from its people. Okay? And also tell them, if the government is not executing 15,000 people, it's not because they don't want to. It's because they True. can't. Right? They definitely want to, and they have before. Right? They just, they know that would be, like, it's not for the lack of um, want. Right? Um, and the fact that the part, the part, the, the parliament of the Iranian people is this is what they signal and this is what they transparently show what their desires are. That is alarming. You know that this would be something that they would do if they could, given how transparently they're asking for it, right? So and that's how you make it right. So this is how you make it a big deal, but you don't tell people a lie because then then anything less than that will make everybody think like that's no, not a big deal is happening. Nothing is happening. So you would be effectively downplaying the situation if you're, if you're saying 15,000 people are going to be executed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think there was just like a lot of confusion or incongruence between what was asked for, which versus what was actually the sentence that came down. But yeah, there are multiple, multiple, prisoners who've already been sentenced to death protesters just for protesting it's yes yeah just for showing up in the streets and we have seen okay here's the thing the government has published the video footage of the court hearings and i don't know how to explain how it's an understatement to say that it was a kangaroo's court it was a clown show. The, the way the level of unprofessionalism, the way the judge was constantly interrupting the protester and putting words in his mouth, anybody with any legal knowledge or any understanding of how proper court proceeding works was like ter pulling their hair out. Even if you they just watch like shows about lawyers on TV, you know that this yeah. is bullshit. <laughs> it was like, guys, it was such a, like in half an hour, they just, they give a death sentence. Like the guy came in with no legal, with no lawyer and no legal representation and got a death sentence within half an hour. And he was the only one who was defending himself. One and hearing. One hearing, one hearing, in the course of half an hour, everything was decided. And the judge was constantly interrupting him and constantly putting words in his mouth. And the guy was so, like, timid and so, like, nervous. And he was, like, didn't, was, like, in such a terrified position that was just accepting what the judge was saying. So the judge was like, you were doing this, weren't you? And he was like, oh, yeah, maybe. Yes, I was. Like, like, dude, they're, they're putting words in your mouth and you're repeating the judge and they're giving you a death sentence based on just the judge, like, leading you into admitting crimes. Like, and they proudly, and guys, this is not leaked video. This was published by the government. Like, they put it out there. Like, they're proud of it. <laughs> My God, it's so bad. I don't know. It's so ridiculous. Okay. It's like so cartoonish. Like if, if someone wrote this in a story and told you it, you'd be like, oh, come on. Like, it's just bullshit. That's not believable. Like, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I could like put the footage. Yeah, I, guys, the reason why I can't put the footage is because YouTube is very sensitive about forced confessions, right? And this is definitely a forced confession because I would want to show this video with you to you guys and go line by line and analyze it with you guys. But if you can look it up and watch it, it's horrible. Anyways, there are certain things that I can't even say right now that I wish I could share with you guys. But one day I, I know, will share I know we talk about a lot of stuff yeah. behind the scenes that we just can't share with you guys you can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free too sexy to show most of it here on youtube we draw muhammad hindu goddesses sexy hijabi art jesus mother mary 
Japanese gods, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.